Hi, I'm Dr. Shauna. The keto diet has risen in popularity over the last several years, so much so that there's even products in the grocery store that have keto in their name or are at least labeled keto friendly. Now today in this video, I want to talk a little bit about keto diet and is it really safe for long-term use? Most people have at least heard of the keto diet. They may not be fully aware or familiar with how it works or what it does specifically, but the name is familiar to them. So the keto diet drastically reduces a person's daily intake of carbohydrates to below 50 grams a day. Most low carbohydrate diets go between 100 and 150 grams of carbohydrates a day. So you can see this is a definite drastic reduction compared to even just low carb diets. So the carbohydrates are then replaced with fats. So fat intake is going to be about 55 to 60% of a person's daily diet. Carbs will then be reduced to about five to 10% of the daily diet. And proteins are gonna stay around 30 to 35% of the daily diet. Now, fats, carbs, and protein are known as macros. So you may hear people that are on the keto diet talk about what their macro levels are. So macros is short for mac macronutrients and fat, carbs, and proteins are our macronutrients that our body needs to survive. So this drastic reduction in the amount of carbohydrates in our body causes our body to create what's called ketones and put us in ketosis. How that happens is by not eating a lot of carbs, our blood sugar levels will be reduced. So then our body has to use fat to create energy. When the body burns fat, it creates ketones. And the ketones are what our body will use for energy. It takes typically about two to four days for a person's body to get into what we call ketosis when we are efficiently burning fats and creating ketones for energy. And that's what people on the keto diet are trying to maintain is a state in a level of ketosis. So there is one short term side effect that bothers a lot of people and it's called keto flu. Um, symptoms of keto flu are nausea, vomiting, insomnia, dizziness, constipation, fatigue, um, endurance issues during exercise. And though it doesn't happen for everyone, it is very common and is usually short term. The reason people get keto flu is because we have drastically reduced the carbs and we're probably not getting enough electrolytes in our diet. The loss of electrolytes cause those symptoms. So the best way to avoid keto flu or at least minimize its effects are to drink a lot of fluids, specifically water, and make sure you're getting enough electrolytes. My tip to everyone that I give who choose to do the keto diet is to take a pinch or two of pink Himalayan sea salt, put it in your water, and drink that throughout the day. According to the 2015-2020 Dietary Recommendations for Americans, over half of Americans are eating the daily recommended amount of carbohydrates. That's about 45 to 65% of their diet. And 70% of Americans are eating more than the recommended amount of added sugars. Now these two stats alone show why keto has become so popular and has been so successful for those trying to lose weight. The dr drastic reduction in the added sugars alone is going to significantly increase people's weight loss. Now, as far as long-term side effects go for keto, there's nothing really beyond about two years. Common risks and potential risks do include vitamin and mineral deficiencies, as well as kidney issues, fatty liver, and hypoproteinemia, which is essentially decrease protein levels in the blood. The best way to avoid these risks or at least reduce the chance of these risks would be to always eat foods every day high in vitamins and minerals. Also want to avoid any processed foods and make sure you are eating healthy fats that are low in saturated fat. There's gonna be fats such as coconut oil, oily fish, olive oil, and avocados. 
Saturated fat diets, diets with high saturated fat levels, they're going to increase your risk for heart disease. So that is why it is essential and so important for those following the keto diet to make sure that they are eating healthy, good fats with very low saturated fat content. Now there are groups of people with certain conditions that should avoid the keto diet. The Academy on Nutrition and Dietetics recommend the following conditions avoid doing the keto diet. These include those with pancreatic issues, kidney disorders, liver problems, um, people with a history of uh, food eating disorders, pregnant women, and those who are breastfeeding moms, as well as people with gallbladder disease or remove gallbladder because of the high intake levels of fats. Um, as always, with every other, any other drastic change in your diet, you're going to want to make sure you discuss any concerns, any issues with your primary care provider. There are quite a few benefits of doing the keto diet, at least in the short term. The first benefit and the biggest reason why most people decide to follow the keto diet is weight loss. Keto diet has also shown to decrease the risk of some cancers. This is because of the reduction in blood sugar levels and the increase in ketones. Most cancers use and feed off of sugar for energy and they can't use ketones for energy. So by reducing the sugar levels in our blood and increasing ketones, the cancers do not have an energy source and will eventually die off. Heart conditions or heart disease can also be drastically reduced by following a keto diet with healthy fats. By eating healthy fats, we can actually decrease our total cholesterol and triglyceride levels, increase HDL or our good cholesterol, decrease LDL or the bad cholesterol, which all drastically improve our heart health. Um, women with PCOS symptoms also can be improved by following the keto diet because by reducing blood sugar levels, it helps balance out insulin levels which are commonly fluctuated and altered in PCOS. Keto can also help with brain function and help reduce in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. This is because ketones have a neuroprotective benefit to them. Also, the brain functions better while burning ketones for energy rather than glucose, which is what our body makes when we eat carbohydrates. The last benefit, and actually the reason why keto was developed in the first place, way back in the 1920s and 30s, is to improve epilepsy, especially in children. Now the National Center for Health Research notes that the keto diet can decrease the frequency of seizures, especially in children. They also noticed a reduction in insulin levels and helping with insulin sensitivity and those with diabetes. As you can see, the keto diet can drastically improve your health as long as you are eating vitamin and mineral dense foods and healthy fats. So as far as my take on the keto diet, um, I feel keto diet is very beneficial for weight loss in the short term. However, I really don't feel that long-term use of keto is a good plan especially if weight loss and a healthy lifestyle is important to you. One reason I feel this way is because by drastically reducing your daily carbohydrate levels to below 50 grams is pretty drastic and it's really hard to maintain long term. So you may be able to do it for a little bit of a time, but then when you fall off the wagon, you're going to end up gaining all your weight back, plus sometimes even more. So my suggestion is to try this. If you do want to choose to use keto for weight loss, use it. Once you get to your level of weight loss you want to be at, then you need to slowly increase your daily carbohydrate intake, but making sure you're eating healthy, complex carbs. This is actually what the Atkins diet, which was very popular back in the late 90s and early 2000s, did for their plan. Now, I also caution people for the keto diet because of the high levels of dairy that people eat while they're following the keto diet. Now, dairy has been known to cause excessive amounts of inflammation for a lot of people. This then will cause 
health issues related to inflammation, such as achy joints, uh, digestive issues, and gut problems. Now, as you can see, you know, anything with keto, I want you to, I want you to take one thing. You take anything from this video and from my opinion, and is no matter why you choose to follow or do the keto diet, make sure you are eating foods that are vitamin and mineral dense, so healthy whole foods, and eating healthy fats. So keep your saturated fat intake levels low. Okay, so you guys, I hope this has been beneficial for you and you've learned kind of ways to do keto and why you would or wouldn't want to do it short and long term. And if you liked it, I would love for you to click like below and comment any feedback or questions down below. Now, and make sure you don't miss any of my new uploads. There's going to be typically one, maybe two uploads if I find a bonus upload every single week by clicking the subscribe button and making sure you click on the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. So thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video. And as always, remember, healing starts from within.